Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to the third talk of the Lightning Talks. We are having here adding performance counters to HDOP by Hisham Muhammad. Thank you. Um, good morning. So we're going to talk about uh, performance counters in HTOP. Um, a little introduction uh, about me. Uh, I am Hisham. I'm the original author of HTOP, a project that started way back in 2004. Uh, I'm also a lead developer of Lurox, the package manager for Lua, and a co-founder of Gobo Linux, which is the craziest distribution you've never heard of. Uh, I, at, at work, I am a developer at Kong, uh, pretty cool open source API gateway that's also written in Lua. Check it out. Um, so, short introduction to HTOP. Uh, well, it's an interactive process manager. The original goal when I started out writing it was just like the original top back in the day in the early 2000s. It annoyed me. I wanted to try to make a better top, quote unquote. And by this, all I originally meant was to be able to scroll. Well, huh? nowadays, the voice versions of top have improved a lot since. Uh, they all scroll now. <laughs> but yeah, back then, it was a novel thing, believe me. Uh, so if you've never seen it, uh, the light's not too good. But this is how it essentially it, it looks like. You can. Scroll our processes, you got three views of the processes. You can select uh, things and change like priorities and things like that. Um, so let's start talking about the topic of the day is metrics in uh, HTOP. So uh, I started, like, in order to produce like a familiar environment, I started with a default set of top. Or, uh, it, I think it's, it's still the default set that it brings now to today, but like, uh, which was essentially what I'm, I'm using here in the, my presentation style, like PID, uh, username, priority, nice number, the three numbers of memory, because you can't never have a single <laughs> clear number of, of memory usage on Linux. So like we cop out and show you like the virtual memory, resident memory, and shared memory. Uh, the state of the process, CPU percentage, memory percentage, uh, which is funny because, well, if you can't show me a real number of what the memory usage is, how can you show a percentage? Uh, <laughs> You have to look into the source code to see how the calculation is done. Uh, spoiler, I stole the calculation from top. Like I said, like, I, I just want to show the same numbers. So, uh, in order to people, so that people won't say that my tool didn't work. Uh, total elapsed time used by the process, total CPU time used by the process, and the command name. It uh, turns out that most people uh, never go beyond the default set. I've met a lot of people who didn't even know about tree view in spite of the fact that I put in a small, uh, this screenshot doesn't show it, but like there's a bar at the bottom, like the last line, it shows like F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and, and all of the main features. Uh, at one point, I made tree view into one of these features, like F5, so people would see it. Uh, but still. Um, so as I said, HTOP has a lot more than these uh, default metrics. So if you do find the setup key in F2 and press it or use uppercase C, which is compatibility key with top, you can enter the setup screen and play around and move around the cursor and choose like the meters, display options, uh, the colors, columns. You can move there and you can uh, mess around with the order of the columns and select even more uh, columns that are available there. Uh, fun fact, uh, originally I, I put in the full list of everything that the process data structure would return to me on Linux, but I didn't implement all the columns. And I just put them on the list and they were returned like blank. Because uh, I was wondering when people would complain to me that search, certain columns will, were, weren't working because I figured that uh, some of them sounded like they would never have a use for it. Uh, there are some that are still blank and nobody has ever complained like in <laughs> all these years. Some of them they did, and I did implement. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, speaking of metrics that are available in HTOP, and a lot of people don't know about, like one that I would like to take this opportunity to bring your attention is IO metrics. Uh, they were inspired by IOTOP, uh, and it has been available in HTOP for years. So, if you go to that list, you will find IO rate. IO read rate, IO write rate. So it's like the number of bytes that were read during uh, the uh, in bytes per second. And IO rate is uh, just the total, uh, the sum of read and write, which is useful to use as a sort column. 
uh, so you can see like whoever is doing I/O and I/O priority, which is uh, really fun because you can select like real time best effort, and you have like highs and lows, and you can control the uh, I/O scheduler for your processes. So, so those are already available. And uh, but but even then, I was always see like people using uh, like HTOP and IOTOP side by side, and, and uh, which is which is nice. But uh, the functionality was basically all, all already there. Uh, just just like with top, I was like inspired with whatever they did, and I tried to I tried to bring it over to uh, to uh, increase the functionality. So and moving on to new metrics, which are the the topic here. Uh, Recent addition to, uh, to HTOP are the delay accounting metrics. Um, this was actually a suggestion originally by uh, Brendan Gregg, the performance guy at, at Netflix, who's done like, some really amazing work with uh, flame graphs and introduced a, a lot of, of performance concepts to a lot of people. Uh, he uh, showed up in the HTOP issues list and posted an issues with like, a feature suggestion, like, why didn't you guys add delay accounting? And then another user, Andre Carvalho, he, uh, he decided to pick up the task, and he implemented uh, those three, uh, three metrics, which, uh, which are like per percentage of CPU delay, I.O. delay, and, and swap delay. What does that mean? CPU, percent CPU delay is the percentage of time that your process is ready, but it's uh, in the ready queue of the scheduler waiting to run. Uh, I.O. delay is the percentage of time it's spent uh, waiting for uh, I.O. devices to return its requests, and swap delay is the percentage of time that it's spent uh, waiting for swap uh, pages, memory pages to be swapped in. Uh, a quick note for uh, distro maintainers, uh, well, it, the, to enable those options with like dash dash enable delay account, uh, you require libnl for netlink support. And to learn more like in detail about delay accounting, I really recommend uh, Andres' uh, blog post uh, about it. So uh, inspired by adding new metrics, like uh, I got inspired to work some more on this stuff again, and uh, and let's and consider adding some more metrics because I've been starting using Perf uh, recently, uh, and Perf is a tool for Linux that makes use of harder performance counters, which are a tool that modern processors have. So those uh, allow for really low overhead performance metrics. Uh, in which like the CPU will uh, count uh, certain events for you like cache events and uh, behaviors, uh, other behaviors like the branch, branch predictor uh, and things like that. Uh, so the CPU exposes that functionality. That functionality is managed by the Linux kernel and it's available uh, in user space. Like, uh, and the main uh, way you can get to those uh, nowadays uh, well, until today, uh, would be via tools like Perf Tools, which again, a lot of people don't know about. Uh, essentially, to use performance counters as a programmer, essentially what you have to do is you perform a syscall to uh, re request a counter. So uh, the syscall will return your file descriptor, which we will periodically read, and you will get the, uh, the numbers. But when dealing with that, you have to be aware that file descriptors and performance counters are limited resources. So uh, if you want to start opening like file descriptors for every process in your system, you, the HTOP process might run out of file descriptors and, uh, unless you like, uh, configure it as so. And, uh, and same thing for performance counters. Like if you have multiple instances of HTOP running, uh, some of them might fail to acquire the, the file descriptors for the performance counters. So, but uh, this implementation is based on TipTop by uh, Evan Rojo and uh, Antoine Nodon from uh, Arial. They have a great academic paper uh, describing uh, hardware performance counters uh, in detail. Uh, and again, was, uh, uh, I, was, uh, I was inspired and based on, on their code, which is essentially uh, a top-like measurement just for uh, performance counters only. So yay for free software and being able to build upon the work of others. Um, so what were the performance counters that, were, that are coming up in uh, HTOP? First one is uh, IPC, instructions per cycle, which uh, because of the nature of superscalar CPUs, uh, you usually you can, you know, since you have like multiple pipelines, you are allowed to have like multiple instructions running at the same time. So if you are 
if you're using like all of your CPU's time, that doesn't mean you're maxing out uh, your processor's capabilities because uh, if you are like using like a single pipeline and it might have like up to say four, like you're essentially using like a quarter of your, or your processing capacity. So uh, besides using only say, CPU percentage, it's important to know what's the, uh, what's the IPC that you are getting. Uh, there are some, also some like absolute numbers, like uh, millions of cycles executed and millions of instructu instructions executed uh, per uh, sampling rate. Uh, percentage of cache misses, uh, percentage of branch mispredictions, and branch mispredictions are of course being a hot topic nowadays. Uh, and also uh, lots of metrics for, for you to look at the usage of your L1 data cache which is uh, an extremely important metric for uh, when you are tuning performance of, or of your algorithms. So like the number of reads in your cache, the number of, of, of misses that cause you to go like another level deep in your cache, uh, writes and, uh, and write misses. And, uh, and those are being like CPU uh, features. Uh, it depends on like CPU, uh, it, it depends on the CPU model exactly like which, uh, which ones are available, but those are, are usually available in, in modern systems. So uh, to make it all manageable visually, uh, I, always, I always said to people that to me, HTOP was more of an exercise in, you know, like in UI design than in systems programming, uh, because like the whole idea of the project was to try to make like uh, consumption of this information more manageable. Uh, I had to add the feature of multiple screens. So. Um, now, uh, so in the, in, the, in the latest version of the code, you can, you can have multiple screens with multiple configurations of columns and you can just press tab to switch uh, between the screens. Uh, so this required a larger change in the format of h.rc, so this will require a major version bump. So I have a couple of minutes, so let's go to demo time. Let's see. If I can manage to. So, well, just to compare, so if you go to like plain HTOP, if you go you press F2 and go to the setup screen, you would get columns, active columns, and available columns. And if you go to like the latest and greatest version, if you go here, instead of columns, you have screens, and then you can have multiple screens, and those can have different sets of columns from the list, which now includes, it's hard to read, but it's like the, the ones at the bottom are the ones that I've been talking about. So that means that when we go here and press tab, uh, you see that those are like really dark and say like not available, it's not, or no, no permission, uh, because I'm, I'm running as a regular user, those are root processes. But like if we go here and try to do something, let's see. I had to do something that hits the disk. So we see now there that fine now because I'm, I'm running through the disk. It's, it got, it's got a lot of IO activity over there. And so if I press tab, now I see all the other metrics. We got like IPC of two over there, uh, the number of cycles, instructions, and the CPU it's currently running on, those kind of things. And then as we update, we get uh, the L1 information. Uh, for some reason, my processor, I'm not getting the write misses, but uh, I'm getting read and read misses and writes to the L1 cache. Fun thing, if we go here and try to do that again, we see no disk activity at all, because now this read is all going through cache. If you see there, over there, like the blue and the yellow, those are the processor caches. So if I go here as root, where the hell is it? Drop cache, there we go. And I tell the kernel to drop the cache. The cache went down. And if I try to do that again, then I'm starting hitting the disk again. And it's all like pretty easy to see. Like you see like the cache went down in the graphical meter and and now we can, we can see like the numbers of disk activity going on. So this was an easy way to, 
to visualize. Oh, those are the screenshots in case the demo didn't work uh, because of like the uh, adapter, the VGA adapter. So uh, in terms of uh, availability, uh, well, everything's on GitHub. Uh, uh, and uh, it's just a matter of packing the tarballs and making the releases, uh, and then it will soon be coming to the distros. Uh, so the IO metrics and delay accounting will be in HTOP, like the stable range, like 2.1, which I'm gonna be packing and uploading today. And uh, for the performance counters and the multiple screens, since it's a breaking change, I am going to make like a better release and like package it as uh, HTOP 3.0. It's gonna be in the, it's gonna be in this, uh, in the website as well. Everything is this is Linux only, but patches are welcome for support for other platforms. And uh, thank you for very much. Okay. Thank you.